current and charge. By the end of this video, uh, you should have a reasonable understanding of what current and charge are in the context of an electrical circuit, and we're also going to introduce an equation which links the two of them up. We're going to start off with making sure we understand what charge is. So charge, uh, we can draw certain analogies with it against mass. So mass is a fundamental property of certain particles that causes them to experience a gravitational attraction to each other. Similarly, charge is a fundamental property that certain particles have which causes them to experience an electric, electrostatic attraction or repulsion uh, when they interact. Uh, so with that we can now define how we measure charge. So how much charge an object or a particle has is measured in coulombs. And one coulomb is, uh, we define it in an electrical uh, in the context of an electrical circuit, so one coulomb is the total charge supplied by a current of one ampere in a time of one second. And in a moment we'll have a look at current and make sure we understand exactly what that is. So one coulomb is one ampere for one second, or one coulomb is one amp times one second. And uh, the base unit of uh, the, the sort of fundamental quantity that we link with charge is how much charge is on a single electron, uh, and that is 1.609 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. So an, ind an individual electron has this many coulombs of charge on it. Uh, so current is the net flow of charge. Uh, so if we imagine our electron and it is charged, if this electron starts moving around, it is flowing, uh, then that is a current. Uh, so we can imagine in a metal we have a lattice of positive uh, electrons, uh, pos positive atoms, so we can sketch out a simple lattice like this. So we have uh, lots of atoms bonded together and each atom has released a free electron and we end up uh, with a sea of electrons dotted around them. Uh, so if we pick ourselves a different colour for the electrons, so all around here we have lots of little electrons just floating around. We describe it as a sea of electrons around the metal, uniform, reasonably uniformly distributed. And if we apply a voltage across these, uh, then these electrons will start to drift in some direction. So all of these electrons will start to gradually drift in this direction, while the lattice, the metal lattice with the larger atoms, stays stationary. And so this drifting of these electrons is a net flow of charge. So overall, there is negative charge traveling, in this case, to the right. Uh, we can also have current flowing through liquids, uh, so you may or may not have come across in a chemical context uh, the use of electrolytes. Uh, so that's where we pass a current through a fluid containing some solution. Uh, so I need a bigger rubber. Uh, in a solution we might have a big old beaker, we stick in some electrode to a liquid, so we have a positive electrode and we have a negative electrode and these will be hooked up to some circuit somewhere and then inside this liquid this might be water with salt dissolved in it and so this salt gives us uh, little positive ions so that would be the sodium and we also get little negative ions so that will be the chlorine or the chloride, not to scale, obviously. And so these negative ions uh, will start drifting to the left towards the positive plate, towards the positive electrode, and the positive ions will start drifting towards the right, towards the negative electrode. And so here we can also see we have a net flow of charge going on. Uh, 
so it must be a net flow of charge. We saw in the example of the metal that we had the positive atoms or positive ions staying stationary and the electrons were flowing around them. We saw see in the electrolyte we have uh, the uh, both the positive and the negative ions flowing uh, in opposite directions so we have this separation of charge, this flow of charge. If we take a neutrally charged atom such as a hydrogen ion, so just a single proton with a single electron loosely buzzing around it. Uh, if we take this hydrogen atom and we say all of this we're going to start flowing to the right then we have charge moving to the right. This negative charge is moving to the right, this positive charge is moving to the right. But because we have as much negative charge as positive charge moving because this is overall a neutrally charged particle there is no net flow of charge. There is as much positive going this way as there is negative going this way. Uh, so for current to flow we must have a net flow of charge. Uh, so being a flow in a particular direction we can see current must be uh, what we would call a vector, so it has a direction in which it travels as well as some magnitude and that mag how we calculate that magnitude we'll uh, see that when we get onto the equation in a minute. Um, so if we imagine sketching a simple circuit, so just a battery connected up to some resistor, inside the wires if it's a metallic wire then we have lots of little electrons in there which can start flowing around. And the way we define the direction of current it is the direction of the net flow of positive charge. So if uh, in this case these negative electrons are going to flow uh, away from the negative plate on the battery and towards the positive plate on the battery. So we have negative charge flowing around uh, in this case uh, mm -hmm. uh, in this case we have negative charge flowing in a clockwise direction so if negative charge is flowing in a clockwise direction then positive charge is flowing in this direction and that is the way we define the direction of current so conventional current this is what we call it so um, back in ye olde days when they were establishing conventions they hadn't yet discovered that electrons existed yet and so they decided to say that the flow of current is in the net flow of uh, is in the direction of the net flow of positive charge uh, so it's sometimes slightly counterintuitive that the current the direction of current flow is opposite to the direction that the electrons flow because the electrons are negative and we define current as the flow of positive charge um, so we've discussed this current and the flowing of charge and now we can have a look at this equation which is how we link them all up. So uh, on the left hand side we've got delta Q equals I times delta T. So Q is the symbol we use for charge. And we've already established that is measured in units of coulombs. This I, typically uppercase, is the unit we use for current and that is measured in amps and here T, this is our time and is of course measured in seconds. So the amount of charge that we have is equal to the current times time. So when we have a current flowing around a circuit for some given amount of time then we will have some total amount of charge which has flowed around our circuit. Uh, and now we can illustrate this with an example. Uh, so this question reads, 10 to the 17 electrons each second pass through a point in an electrical circuit. Determine the current and the time taken for one coulomb of charge to pass this point in the circuit that we're looking at. So you might want to pause this now and have a go at it yourself before I go over it. So the way that we do this is if we're going to determine the current we know from uh, what we were just looking at that the charge is equal to current times time. 
therefore current is equal to charge divided by time. So we know we're told that this many electrons travel in one second, so this time is going to be one second. So the question is how much charge has flowed? We know we've got 10 to the 17 electrons, and we know that each electron uh, has 1.609 times 10 to the 19 coulombs. And so the total charge on that 10 to the 17 electrons is 0.016, so on coulombs. So that's the charge that we have flowing. So this value we can now stick up into our value of Q up here. So this value goes into Q and that gives us a value of uh, when we divide that current by the one second that will just give us this in amps. So it will be 16 milliamps. So I've uh, put that with a prefix in front of it there. Uh, so the next part, of that, that's the first part of the question, determining uh, the current. The next part of the question asks us to work out the time taken for one coulomb of charge. So we're just going to rearrange this equation again uh, for time this time. So if we rearrange this, what we get is time is equal to charge divided by current. And so our charge is one coulomb. We know our current from the previous part of the question is 16 milliamps. So as long as we're careful with these factors of 10, then once we punch that in, we get a value of 62 seconds. Uh, 60, just under 62 and a half seconds. So it will take, uh, if we've got 10 to the power of 17 electrons flowing through some point each second, then it will take 62 seconds for one full coulomb of charge to flow. Uh, so that should now have explained what current and charge are, how we measure charge, uh, the units that we use to measure current, and we've had a look at an equation which links charge and current and shown an example of it.